in uh, the government calls us the Chippewa. Our neighbors called us the Ojibwa, which means the people with the puckered moccasin. So if you see my moccasins, how they're puckered at the toe, that's where we got our name from our neighbors. But we call ourselves the Anishinaabe, which means the original people. So we actually have three names. And my name is Marjorie, I told you that. Um, and I want to uh, apologize to my uh, ancestors if I make a mistake today. Um, I'm going to try and introduce myself in the Ojibwe language, but um, some people in here are far better at it than I am. But Anishinaabe and Dao, Zikala Shawin Indijnakas, Ajijak Dodam, Odawa Slavi Egwini, Indunjima. So, uh, my name is Marge Herbring, but my Indian name is Red Bird Woman. And I got that name from a Dakota pipe carrier when I graduated from college. <laughs> anyway, I'm a member of the Hooteré tribe and uh, an elder from there. And um, uh, I've spent many, many days uh, listening to Ojibwe storytellers. And I've worked on uh, uh, reservations for several years, the Menominee Reservation, the Lacoudere Reservation, and the Lac de Flamme Reservation. I worked in Eau Claire as a um, liaison between the Native families and um, the school district, which was a program called Title IX. Um, the Ojibwe do not tell stories unless there's snow on the ground. So you'll notice what happened to us this week. I was very happy when I saw all that snow. I thought, boy, we can tell lots of stories now. <laughs> now let me tell you a little bit about Ojibwe storytelling. Um, the rule is you can't tell a story unless there's snow on the ground. One of the characters that we talk about, his name is Winnabuju, and some people think uh, the word Buju comes from his name. Uh, we don't talk about him unless there's snow on the ground. And the reason for that is because all the little animals like the stories too. And they like to come around and, and they, if we were telling stories all summer, or all, win, all summer, they, would, uh, they wouldn't get ready for winter. They wouldn't be gathering nuts or making their nests or, you know, and so another reason is, um, well, they would tell the children, if you tell a story in the summertime, you're gonna wake up with a frog or a snake in your bed. <laughs> and I always tell students, when I talk about that, you see your bed at home, but if you lived in a wigwam and you brought in pine boughs to make a soft bed and put the, uh, the hair of the deer on top of that, you'd have a nice soft bed, but it would be easy for a, a frog or a snake to, to climb in. And, and you, re you have to remember, some of these stories are thousands of years old, like tens of thousands of years old. And there was no written language, so everything was passed down orally. And so storytellers have to remember those stories. And I should also tell you that uh, the Ojibwe creation stories, and I'm gonna tell you a little short version of some of them, they, they can last as long as four days. 